In this video I'm going to explain and show you two tourist traps that I came across on one of my first days here in Colombo, Sri Lanka and some people even call this a scam. I would disagree with that, I think it's just a tourist trap and not a scam. I'll explain in a minute why. But feel free to also share your thoughts about it in the comment section down below. Do you think it's a scam, it's a tourist trap or do you even think it's a legit business? Maybe we can start an open discussion about that in the comment section down below. And yeah, maybe this video can help some people to avoid ending up in similar situations and just be aware of this situation. And yeah, before I start to explain and show you what happened to me, uh, two quick little disclaimers. First of all, situations like this can happen anywhere in the world, not only in Sri Lanka. I know, for example, that something similar is also known to happen in Bangkok. And even in my home country in Germany, when I was visiting Berlin, our capital, I came across something very similar. So it's not only in Sri Lanka. And the second disclaimer, this is not representative for the overall genuinely friendly people here in Sri Lanka. So far, 99% of people I have met were super welcoming and friendly towards me. So please don't think anything bad about Sri Lanka because of this. This can happen anywhere and is not representative for the people here. But yeah, what actually happened? So I was out exploring around Colombo on one of my first days in the city. And after a long day of walking around and filming a video, I was actually quite tired and I just wanted to go back to my hotel. So there was a tuk-tuk driver approaching me and he asked me, hey, where you want to go? I showed him my hotel on my phone on Google Maps and he said, hey, I can drive you there for free, but we have to make a stop at my friend's shop. You have a look for five minutes. You don't need to buy anything. And then I drop you off at your hotel for free. And I knew immediately uh, what this is about. It works like this. The shop pays a commission to the driver or a cut of whatever I buy in the shop. So he makes money when I spend money at the shop. And I told him, hey, I know how it works. I know you get a commission from them. You get a cut of whatever money I spent there. But I'm happy to just pay for the ride without the stop, just going straight to my hotel. But then he was like, hey, brother, please help me. They will give me a voucher for gasoline, which is worth more money than the amount of money you would pay me for the ride. Please help me. It's just five minutes. You don't need to buy anything. And then I drive you to your hotel for free. And then I told him, listen, I know you get a commission, but I will 100% not buy anything there. And then he said, yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. Just have a look, no need to buy. And then it was actually my mistake. I was too naive. Instead of just leaving and finding another tuk-tuk, I agreed to that and I even asked him, hey, do you really get the voucher even if I don't spend any money there? Because 100% I will not spend any money. And he said once again, yeah, yeah, no problem. I get the voucher, just five minutes. You don't need to buy, no problem. So I agreed and what I imagined was there will be a shop, there will be other tourists. I walk around, have a look and then I can just leave. But turned out it was very different than that. And then as soon as we arrived at the shop, I actually started to record. I do that sometimes when I feel I'm about to to come into a shady situation where I don't feel comfortable. Sometimes I just record to feel more safe, you know, in case anything happens. I at least have it on camera. So that's when I started to actually record. And then as soon as we entered the shop, the tuk-tuk driver saw that I turned on my camera and he said, stop filming, stop filming, which made me even think more, oh, this is going to be shady because why would he ask me to stop filming if it's not, or if it's a legit proper business, you know? So I entered it and I knew right away, okay, this is different than uh, I thought. There were four or five people in there, salespersons, so no tourists. I was the only foreigner, the only tourist in there, and I was asked to have a seat. Take video. Oh, I would like to film. If you see something beautiful, so remember. Yeah. Which country are you from? I'm from Germany. And then a guy, very friendly actually, very friendly guy, started to speak German with me. And he asked me where in Germany I am from. I said, from near Bremen. And he said, oh, Bremen, I have lived in Bremen for, for a few years. And then I immediately knew, okay, this is a typical sales tactic. Um, I, I, I studied marketing and I used to work in sales before. So I knew these sales tactics. And yeah, they, they speak in your native language to you to make you build more trust. 
And uh, of course, he knows somebody in your hometown or he has been to your hometown. I've heard that hundreds of times before. So I knew what is going to happen now. And then, yeah, a typical sales talk uh, started. He showed me rings, jewelry, necklaces. And I saw the prices right away and it seemed to be very expensive. The prices on the, on the rings, for example, were 300, 400 US dollar. So I thought, wow, okay, this seems to be way overpriced. But then one of his first sentences actually was, today and only today you get 50% discount on everything. And then that was another red flag for me. If somebody offers me a huge discount like that right away before I even started to say anything. I know, okay, the, the prices here are probably way overpriced and even with the 50% discount, it probably is still way too much. But yeah, then he was showing me different items, a typical sales talk, but once again, he was actually quite friendly, speaking actually also really good German. But the problem I see in situations like this is that I think it can easily be overwhelming for people and I think that many people feel the pressure to, to, to buy something in order to get out of the situation. You have to imagine, that was a small room, I was the only foreigner in there. The tuk-tuk driver was the whole time sitting right next to me as if he would like to supervise the situation in order to make sure I really buy something and he gets his commission. And then there were always two salespersons in front of me and one person was standing like right behind me the whole time. So I was constantly surrounded and actually that made me feel uncomfortable. And I can really imagine that many people, maybe when you are traveling alone for the first time or you just feel uncomfortable in situations like this in general, or you are a woman and then being surrounded by four men the whole time, I really think that this can build a pressure for many people to buy something. And I do think also that they do this on purpose. So I would not call this a scam because it's not something illegal going on or fraud. So I would just call this a tourist trap. And the prices are probably really overpriced in there as well. In the end, he offered me a necklace um, with my name written on it in Sinhalese language. He drew it on a piece of paper and he said they can create this for me in less than an hour. And the price for this, this should have been 100 US dollar. And yeah, I am curious, what do you think? Do you think this is a scam? Would you agree with me and call this just a tourist trap? Or do you even think this is a proper legit business? I mean, I can really understand the people. They are trying to make money and they were actually friendly to me. So nothing wrong with that, not at all. But yeah, I do think that yeah, it can put pressure on people, forcing people kind of to buy something and the items I believe were all super overpriced. So in the end, after like 20 minutes, I spent way too much time there. I uh, tried to find a way out of there. I said very politely, thank you. Thank you for showing me everything for the explanations, but I'm not interested to buy anything now. Have a good day. We shook hands and I left. Bye bye. Bye bye. Spazieren gehen? Spazieren gehen? Nein, Hotel. Ah, schlafen. All day around. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Bye bye. As soon as I said that, the mood of my tuk-tuk driver changed completely and he was looking a little bit angry and not really happy with the situation and he said, oh no, no, now I can't drive you for free because you don't buy anything, you have to pay for the ride now. And I, I, I said, well, that's why I asked you in the beginning, do you also get the voucher if I don't spend any money here? So um, yeah, he was not happy with the situation and I actually, I was just really tired and uh, I also felt a little bit bad because I just wasted 20, 25 minutes. So I said, okay, just drive me to my hotel. I pay for the ride. Uh, just, uh, I want to get to my hotel now. So all in all, it was actually my mistake to fall for all of this. I should have just asked another tuk-tuk to drive me. So when you are in a similar situation, don't fall for the guy thinking you can help him to get a voucher for gasoline. Just go away and find a tuk-tuk that is happy to accept just the money for the ride, you know? And also, when I was at my hotel, I searched for the shop on Google Maps just to see if it's a legit store on Google Maps because 
every legit store has a Google Maps location, maybe some reviews, some pictures, you know, but this store was not on Google Maps at all, which is another huge flag for me because every legit store is on Google Maps these days. So that was another point where I thought, okay, maybe this, or probably this was not a legit store with legit prices, you know? And yeah, then the second situation that happened to me actually on the same day, just an hour before of all of this, um, I was walking around the city and I was looking to find the ocean. Then a guy approached me speaking really, really good English and he asked where I want to go. I told him I want to go to the ocean and he said, oh, it's over there. He, he gave me the directions and then he, uh, he started to ask, oh, where are you from? I said, from Germany. He said, where exactly in Germany? I said, near Bremen. And he said, oh, I have a friend in, in Bremen, a really good friend. And you see, once again, the same thing uh, that also the guy in the shop told me. They either know somebody in your home uh, hometown or they have been to your hometown. So I knew into which direction this is probably going to. So I said, okay, okay, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you for the directions. And then I kept walking. And I mean, what are the chances that I run into two guys in Colombo on the same day who both uh, either have been to my hometown or have a friend living in my hometown. And then about a minute later, he showed up uh, next to me, sitting on the back seat of a tuk-tuk. And he said, hey, jump into the tuk-tuk. We can drive you to the ocean for free. No problem, no money, just uh, jump in the tuk-tuk. I mean, he was a super friendly local, but I think the chances are pretty high that if I would have gotten into the tuk-tuk, I would have ended up in another shop of his friend. Something like this is a very similar situation. So I just said, no, thank you, no, thank you. And I just kept walking. By the way, if you search for the friendly local scam on Google, you will find an explanation about this. Uh, so this is a well-known thing actually, but I also do think that not everybody is aware of this. So be careful when super friendly people approach you and they know somebody in your hometown. That is always a, a big red flag for me. And yeah, I hope this video can be helpful for some persons to be aware of situations like this. As I said before, this not only happens in Sri Lanka, it can happen in any major city around the world. Let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section and also have you been to a similar situation before? Feel free to share it in the comment section down below so maybe we can learn from similar or other situations. And once again, I am super happy to be in Sri Lanka and this will not ruin my overall super first impression of the country, of the people here. And yeah, if you haven't seen my first impression video of Sri Lanka, check out the video right here. Thanks for watching, stay healthy, stay positive, and then see you on the next episode. Ciao guys!